All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna get the shovels back in the back of the truck, the snow blower. This looks like it's charged. Today's gonna be a long day. All right, today's gonna be a little bit tougher of a day. We got snow here in the morning, got a little bit of a break. Snow again in the afternoon, and then we have 50 mile an hour up to 65 mile an hour gusts for the next like 48 hours. So we're gonna have a lot of drifting. Um, we're gonna be all going to the job site probably three or four times. Day three which will turn into 48 hours. Day three, let's go. Whoa, didn't see you there. I'm just kidding. I saw you guys and I know you guys are here because it is day three. And day three is gonna be a good one, guys. As you saw in the thumbnail, we got a semi stuck in a loading ramp. We got clients coming out of their front door to yell at us. We got snow blowing action on the Jacobson. We got snow plowing action on the pickup. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff and this is all during a blizzard. Negative 38 degrees, wind chill, very cold day. Um, but this is day three. I'm happy that you guys are back. Thank you for joining me again. We'll go through this video and I know we're only supposed to have three videos. That's why I titled it the three days of snow. But if you guys stick around to the end of this video, you'll see at the end, we break the Jacobson yet again. And so we had to spend the next day running around town getting parts for it to fix it. And we'll take you along for that. So stay tuned. guys so here we showed up at the townhome association that we clear and I don't know if you guys have seen this one in another video or not but this is a 32 home townhome association and they have their own private road that is a u-shape and so that makes it kind of difficult to clear with the truck plow as you could imagine it's not very wide um, they actually had to add a sidewalk at the same level as their drive lane so that the street was technically wide enough to be considered a street. 
Um, so that's kind of interesting, but it only takes about three swipes with the Jacobson to get the, to get the total width of the road. But because of the U-shape, the corners take five to six, and figuring out where to pile snow can get difficult. Um, it's very tight, there's not a lot of room between the houses. And with the weather that we've been having, we also can't drive onto the grass just yet. Um, this, the weather's just been too warm that the grass isn't completely frozen yet, and so if the plow were to go across it, it would pull up dirt and grass, and we'd have to reseed that in the summertime, or in the springtime. So what we have been doing when we get a little bit more snow than this, because there isn't a lot of snow in this video, when we get more snow, what we end up doing is actually putting the plow in a V and just pushing all the snow out to the edges. And when we push it out to the edges, then we just have the Jacobson go down them when, they're, when it's going throughout the driveways of the houses and just blow it into the yards. And as you guys probably know, snow blowing makes the seam seems to make the snow disappear better than plowing does um, because it's not just being balled up and pushed into one area it's just being thrown out in the air and kind of dispersed evenly throughout the yards and that is also a point of contention coming up as you will see when we pile snow there are only a few areas to put it and one of the most convenient is at the ends of these at the end of the U um, instead of going around a corner turning off midway through and as you can see a client didn't like it very much um, she was more concerned with the snow being piled up on the hedge but the hedge does not have any growth left on it and they're pretty hardy I thought maybe there was like pavers or landscaping around it because I wasn't able to see it in the summertime um, but it's understandable that she doesn't want snow in her front yard or blocking the visibility of the window. But we are also live in North Dakota, and while we might not have that much snow this year, most years we have quite a lot. So it's always a struggle in tight areas. In the end, I did just end up explaining that the snow probably wasn't going to hurt the bush. Because there was no growth on it, the snow was going to be able to pass through. And they're pretty thick stalks. Um, but if it did look like it was getting pushed over too much later on in the winter or anything like that, um, that we weren't going to pile any more snow on it, but we could also bring the snowblower on the Jacobson and blow it back in between the houses a little bit more if need be. guys we just got the call that the ice melt is in so we're gonna go pick that up and get the pallet load in the back of the truck Right here the GoPro froze and I'm not sure why but the video that it's about to switch to I ended up recording with my phone because I wanted to see how much the truck level is going to drop down um, so we're going to have to use that angle instead. Pretty cold day to be unloading a pallet of ice melt. Yeah, so what you guys are about to see right here, I had to pull the truck up um, to the other loading ramp area first 
and I had to take the Jacobson off the trailer because the back of my truck is too high for the trailer jack to reach the ground without some type of like 2x4 or cinder block um, to use underneath it. And I do have a drop hitch that I use in the summertime because the mowers are able to just drive off, off the ramp. But with the Jacobson, I need the tongue of the trailer higher than the back so that it brings down the back of the trailer and makes the gate less of an angle. And even with that, I still need to use ramps. And those ramps were $300 um, on Amazon to get 3,000 capacity, 3,000 pound capacity ramps. So if you guys have any other options or any other ideas on how to get the Jacobson off better because the clearance is not good, leave that in the comment section below. Um, I'll definitely look for something to improve it next winter because carrying around the ramps kind of sucks. Having to set it up every time takes a lot of time. And then also just if I need to take the trailer off or something, I always need to take the Jacobson off the trailer or bring those boards with me um, to unhook in a parking lot. But I always forget the board, so I end up taking everything off the trailer and then lifting the trailer off by hand, lifting it back on after. And so what I was actually doing right here was shoveling back behind um, near the entrances, the walk-in entrances. And he had been there the entire time I was there, and so I was wondering if he was finishing off um, unlo unloading his load or if somebody was inside finishing unloading it. But then he came up to me and tapped on my glass when I got back in the truck and asked if I had any salt or sand and I said no I didn't and I asked if he was stuck and he said he was. And so I normally have a tow strap with me in my truck and for some reason I didn't. And actually let me pause the video right here quick too. This is the rope guys. This is... This is about as small as it gets. These are the hooks, ratchet strap, very small. This is a 1,000 pound, 454 kilogram ratchet strap from WLL Erickson. And this was all I had in my truck. Very thin, um, thinner than the thinnest straps I used to strap down are like our walk behind mowers on our trailer in the summertime. So there's no way that that should have held, but I'll get back to the video here. And what I ended up doing was actually looping. He didn't have tow hooks on the front of his semi like I do on the front of my pickup, but he had holes that went through his bumper um, that were metal reinforced. So I ended up sticking the ratchet strap through both those holes and then hooking it up just with the hooks onto my tow chain area on the back of my truck. He actually did have some straps with him, but they were specialized straps that were meant to strap down cargo inside on a hitch system or a strap system that they have on like the walls and the floors. And they were too big to fit through those holes that I was able to fit <laughs> the thousand pounds ratchet strap through. Here I had to check the video quick just to make sure I got it for you guys because I wasn't going to miss this opportunity.
So there I was just hopping up um, on the side of the cab to ask him if he was able to move from there or if we'd have to keep pulling. It's a very nice guy that I met. Um, he was in a very good attitude for getting stuck in the middle of a blizzard. And I, he definitely wasn't from around here. Um, I don't think he was dressed for the weather either. He's probably just passing through and didn't envision getting stuck. But my truck was at 2,500 RPM and the red line is 3,900 for you guys wondering. So we're over 66% throttle as well as in four-wheel drive and the tires weren't slipping so to be at that high of an rpm without the tires slipping is pretty insane that's a lot of power there he was still spinning his tires and getting out and the truck started bouncing and wasn't sure if he was able to get out and I just looked it up for you guys here the 6.0 uh, power stroke diesel v8 engine that I have in my Ford produces 325 horsepower and 560 foot-pounds of torque at 2,000 rpm so I was a little bit over that rpm range um, but in theory we would have been using all the torque to get them out of there. Pretty crazy. Of course, like I was talking about earlier, here we are getting back out in 38 degree weather to manually lift the trailer back on, drive the Jacobson back up, get the ramps back on the trailer. So please guys, if you have any tips, I'd greatly appreciate those because I do not like doing this. Alright guys, you just saw us pull out that semi uh, with a thousand pound tow straps. Glad they were able to hold up and didn't snap because um, there was no salt, there was no sand to put down at the property. So that was all we could do to get them out. Uh, so thankfully that worked and now we're on our way back to the storage unit because these hard pack drifts really don't work with the broom. Uh, or the sweeper attachment on the Jacobson. So we're gonna go back and switch it out for the two stage snow blower um, because we have another two inches of snow coming this afternoon plus 50 mile an hour winds. So all the snow on the roof is gonna come off the buildings and create some pretty big drifts um, at the townhomes and the shopping center and then the church. So we're gonna go put the snow blower on and right now it's about negative 38 degrees wind chill. Um, so it's it's cold. Day three, let's go. Cold is exactly right. Man, it was freezing that day. Getting out of the truck for, I think when I looked on the weather app, it said frostbite to exposed skin in two minutes. Um, so not good, but here we are, we're switching it out, and now is probably a good time for our drink review. So today we have another bubbler. This is going to be the Twisted Elixir flavor. So we'll get the first drink impressions of this one as well. It's a very peculiar flavor. Not bad, just peculiar. It's kind of weird. I feel like I've tasted it before, but I don't know from where. The hints of flavor that it says on here are raspberry, lime, and citrus, which I can definitely see all three, or taste all three. Um, but it kind of tastes like a candy that I might have had as a kid. And for being sparkling water, it's pretty sweet, but... Man. I wish I could think of what it is, because I tell you, I'm not trying to keep it a secret. If I could tell you exactly what it tasted like, that'd be great. Oh, so, 
here we are again. I don't know if you guys have seen this in a previous video or if you'll see it again in a future video because there are a few where I come into the storage unit to switch out the attachments and every time I've had to do it this winter, it has not been fun. The hitch implement on the tractor gets frozen and the hydraulic lines have gotten stuck to where they don't come off easy. So whole load of things that uh, don't work out real well when it's cold. So switching the attachments is not easy and painful. It's not easy and pain free like they are in the summertime, that's for sure. Okay, so this is back at the shopping center again. There was a lot of snow in the back area where I was shoveling in the beginning. And it's an L shape in the back there behind the dumpsters. And so the snow swirls off the roof and drops down in there. So if we get one inch of snow, there's probably four inches of snow back there. And if we get six inches of snow, there's about three feet of snow. So we always need something different back there other than shovels or whatever we're using out in the front. And because of how deep it was and it was hard packed because of all the wind. Lights are really bright on the Jacobson, so that's nice. Never struggle to see at night. It's got the same lights, two of them on the front, two of them on the back. Do you hear that weird squeak? I didn't hear it originally when I was in the cab, but I heard it once I watched the video back. Um, and this was the first time that the snowblower was used this season, so it might have just been leaves are not being used for a while. Um, but there was hydraulic oil going through it, and as far as I know, everything was greased up, so not sure what it was. It went away when the snow um, started bogging it down a little bit. So. See anything I'm doing dumb here? Yeah, it was windy, and that's why I decided not to put up the chute on the Jacobson because anything I shot up in the air would just come right back. And so I did get out here to adjust it, and I adjusted it just slightly up. But the damage had already been done. I already blew most of the snow in between the bollards and the dumpsters. And as you guys will see in a different video, we come back and clean that up between the dumpsters just because we didn't want to leave a mess, basically. Would have been nice to put it up and get it right the first time. Remember, efficiency is key. that I didn't run over it. Um, I do have the GoPro Plus, I think it's called, that I pay for, so if it were to get broken, it wouldn't be such a big deal. I'd be able to send it in and get a new camera replaced. Um, so in that case, maybe it would have been good to run over it. I can't really wink, but if I could, um, to get a new camera. But it was on the suction cup mount, I believe, on the front windshield, and I'm not sure why it fell off. Um, actually I do. That was 
an off-brand suction cup mount that I got from Amazon instead of the GoPro mount, um, the GoPro branded suction cup. And after that other suction cup not really sticking well, like to painted surfaces and things like that, I decided to buy the GoPro suction cup. And guys, there's no comparison. If you guys buy aftermarket accessories for cameras on Amazon, most of them are pretty much the same and work well, but the GoPro branded suction cup is by far better. Hey, I was doing everything I could. I back drug the entire parking lot. This is the small parking lot on the side of the church. Back drug everything, push it all to one pile just so I could hit it. And that was all the snow I could get up, so I'm doing what I can. Alright guys, and that was our last thing that we had to do for today. So, here we are back at the storage unit. We're going to drive the truck in first, like I mentioned in the last video, um, so that the plow does unmount from the truck. Otherwise, if we try to do it at the front of the storage unit, in front of the trailer, because of the angle, it doesn't come off. If you haven't seen day two, go back and watch that video. Um, I explain a little bit more in depth on that one. But I'm just going to fast forward through this quick. So. We just drop off the plow first, back up, turn around, drive the trailer in, back the trailer in, and then unhook it. But this time we're unhooking it on blocks and you'll see that comes off much easier like that. And that's what we have. So that is what we have for today's video. As you guys saw, we had a whole plethora of things. We had the lady yelling at us very nicely and responding very nicely. Problem was resolved. We had the semi truck getting stuck. We also had the Jacobson showing off a little bit with the snowblower. We had the truck hitting what we could muster for a pile. So if you guys are still here at the end of this video, so I know who the true patrons of the channel are, go down below and type in the comment you see right here, which for today's video is going to be stuck in a blizzard why stuck in a blizzard well because that's what happens um when it's that cold a lot of cars batteries don't start um things freeze very easily and as you saw the semi was stuck luckily we were able to get them out with still have them thousand pound toe straps can't believe they worked but they did um so guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you guys are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It'll notify you if you turn the bell on next to it. It'll notify you when all my new videos come out so you guys can follow along with me on what we do throughout the winter and the summer. As well as, it'll help the channel out a lot. And I appreciate that, guys. So I think that is all I have for today's video. As I said before, we will have day four coming out, which is gonna be a repair day, fixing what you guys saw a little bit earlier with the Jacobson. It never ends. Um, but thank you for sticking around to the end of this video, and I will see you guys for day four.